Shavuot Tov Rabotai, we are continuing with our Mishnah Yomi Masechet Kitubot. We are up to Perik Vav Mishnah Dalet. Today's Mishnah should be Le'elu Nishmad, Neria Ben Svetlana, Ranbaev, Eliyahu Ben Burcha Yisraelo, Ben Chana Ben Miriam, Menuchatam Ben Eden, Amen. And Le'abdi Ben Chaim Lechaim, and the Refua Shenamav, Daniel Shalom Ben Rosa, Betoch Shachol Yisrael. The previous Mishnah stated that if there is cash in a bride's dowry, the groom must write in the Ketubah that he will pay her back 50% more. That Mishnah gave an example of a large sum of money, 1,000 dinars. This Mishnah teaches that the same rule applies to a small sum of money. Pascal achnis no ksafim, if she pledged to bring cash into the marriage for him, sela kesef na'asa shisha dinarim, a sela four dinars, becomes six dinars in her ktubah, meaning the groom must write in the ktubah that he will pay her back six dinars and increase to 50%. Now, the commentaries explain both examples are necessary. On the one end, it could be argued that 50% must be added only when the sum is large and the husband can make a great profit. Our Mishnah therefore teaches that an extra 50% is required even where the amount is small, such as four dinars. On the other end, it could have been thought that the increase is necessary only where the small amount is small and the husband's, risks and exp- the husband's risk and expenses are low. The previous Mishnah therefore applies the 50% rule even to a large amount. That's why both examples are necessary. The Mishnah discusses another law that applies to the dowry. Hechatan mekabel alav asara dinarin nekupa lechol maneh o maneh. The groom accepts upon himself that for every money, every 100 dinars in his wife's dowry, whether cash or goods, he will pay 10 dinars for a basket of cosmetics. A woman is entitled to a tenth of her dowry for cosmetic supplies, as Rashi explains in Mesechi Ketubot, page 66b. The Mishnah does not say whether the entire payment is given to her on the first day or to spread over a period of time. The next Tana makes a general statement about the laws taught in this Mishnah and in the previous one. Aban Shimon ben Gamliel Omer, Aban Shimon ben Gamliel says, Hakol ki minaga medina, everything is done according to the local custom. The, rule, the rules taught in these two Mishnahot apply only in communities that do not yet have an established custom. In places where there is an established custom, the custom must be followed. And the Tosun Yom Tov explains, there is no dispute between the Tana Kama and Rabban Shimon ben Gamliel. Both agree that one must observe the local's custom if there is one. The, Tana's, the Tana Kama's ruling apply, rulings apply only in a new community or in a community that does not yet have an established custom. And that is an abutai of Mishnah Dalid. Now it is a mitzvah for her father to provide his daughter with a dowry so that men will be eager to marry her. This Mishnah, Mishnah Hey, defines the minimum that a father must provide. Hamasiyet bito stam loif cholam mechamishim zuz. If one marries off his daughter without specifying the contents or value of her dowry, he may not give less than 50 zuz for her. A husband's obligation to provide his wife with clothing, like we learned in chapter 5, Mishnah 8, does not take effect until after the wedding is swing when she moves into his home. It is the father who supplies her clothes. Until then, the Mishnah states the law where her father and husband agree that the husband will start giving her clothes before the wedding. Pasak lachnisah aruma, if the father stipulated to the husband that he will bring her into her husband's home without clothes, meaning he will stop providing her with clothes before the wedding, and the husband accepted the stipulation, committing himself to clothe her from that time, lo yomar abal, kshachnisah lebeti achasena bichsuti. The husband cannot say, after I bring her into my home, I will dress her in clothes that befit my high status, but until then I will give her clothes that befit her father's low status. Rather, he must dress her in clothes that befit his higher status, even when she is still in her father's home. The bride and her father would be embarrassed if she went from his house to her groom's house for Nisween, dressed in the clothing of poor people and not in the elegant garments that are appropriate for the special occasion. Therefore, once the husband accepts to provide her with clothing, he must dress her in a manner that accords with his higher social status. And the general rule is that when a wealthy man marries a woman from a poor background, he must treat her like a woman of his status. The Mishnah teaches that this rule applies even where the husband voluntarily committed himself to provide her with clothing before the Nisuin. The Mishnah returns to its first ruling at the minimum dowry is 50 zuz. Similarly, when the manager of the local charity marries off an orphan girl, he may not give her less than 50 zuz for a dowry, even if no charity is available and he has to borrow the money. However, if there is money in the charity person, he does not need to borrow. She must be supported in a manner that befits her status. And that is an Abu Taif Tadish Mishnah Everybody should have a Shavuot Tov. Baruch Adonai Le'olam. Amen v'amen.